Good morning, Marriage Matters family. It is 8 a.m. And you need to get up. It's time to get going. I know people need to get haircuts. Yards need to be cut. House needs to be clean. Children need to be dispersed or whatever. But Or you're not paying attention to us because you still sleep, which I understand because everybody needs their Saturday sleep without Mr. and Mrs. Johnson bothering them. But whichever way, whether you look at it now or whether you go back and look at it on our YouTube page, you have access to us. You have access. So we had a, um, last Saturday was great, good information. Mm -hmm. And so we'll continue on today when we can talk about getting a fresh start. I'm going to give that to you so I can, well, I'll wait. And then we'll read out this. So you all can, uh, we're going to talk about getting a fresh start today. So we're going to get a fresh start right now with this and give people a few more minutes to get on in here. And um, I'm going to ask for you to like the video, share the video, <clears throat> subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not done so already. Um, we are moving. Uh, we also have the Marriage Matters Couples Facebook group. <laughs> so, uh, come on and be a part of that. We are now at 222 members and growing. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's something to be excited about. It is. The only thing we want to promote is healthy marriages, healthy families, um, and just this an ongoing fight to teach, mold, correct, I guess enlighten, but build the family unit. That's very important. And it doesn't matter whether you're married or single. The reality is that the attack on the family is from the enemy and not from God. <clears throat> and if you can break down the family so that everybody's not together, then a house divided, a house divided, uh, it falls. Mm -hmm. And so our job and our goal, our our vision is to push the work that it takes to build a family, build that strong marriage and work through the stuff that mm -hmm. needs to be dealt with. We gotta we gotta put our hands in the water to work through the muck. Right. The mud. And and sometimes it can get pretty muddy. Mm -hmm. So the thing is <clears throat> The things that we talk about, discuss, teach, whatever it is that you want to call it, uh -huh. you know, we go through it too. You know, yes. so sometimes y'all don't know, but we're going through things as we're as we're teaching and learning and sharing information mm -hmm. with you all. We're learning too. Yes. You know. If you don't go through anything, then your life is pointless. Because you won't be able to speak on any struggle that you've overcome. Therefore, you won't be earthly good to anybody if you never had a struggle, mm -hmm. never had a setback, right. never made a mistake, never said something inappropriate that you shouldn't, never had a bad thought. It just wouldn't be any fun for you. Because then that would make you somebody that we look up to and that, that can't be no human being. Right. So our focus is just to continue to do the work that's mm -hmm. necessary. You know, people evolve, they change, and we have to be ready for those type of changes because in life, nothing stays the same. But here's the thing. Even if we're not ready for mm -hmm. that change, we're either going to stop on our own mm -hmm. and refocus or it's the, or whatever that thing is, is going to make us stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's either going to be voluntarily or involuntarily. Yeah. And but you got to make the change. And so that's a big part of what we we're, we're talking about today. It's called a fresh start. Okay. I'm going to hand you that. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, out. I don't know who's in here on uh Facebook, but good morning to you. Uh we got brother Ed and we got Miss Tabitha in with us this morning. If you don't go through anything, that simply means God don't mess with you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, okay. All right, brother. Here, one love. Oh. All right. Look forward to seeing you at one o'clock. And so, um, 
<laughs> Our focus today is going to be on the first thought. Ms. Johnson okay. has the she has the floor. Okay. So when you when you <clears throat> can test and, and see that's the the one thing I'm gonna add to brother <laughs> to what brother here said. You know the thing is <clears throat> we go through tests and trials, but when you go through it, that means God carried you through it. But if you get in it and get stuck and you don't move, you know, are you trusting him or are you looking to him to help you get through it? That's the question. Hey, Sissy, good morning. I'm typing as fast as I can. <laughs> All right. Good morning, Miss Kenya. Okay, so <clears throat> the question is, I want to start with, is why do we need a fresh start? And what does that do? Why do we need a fresh start and what does that do? Mm -hmm. I mean, a fresh start means that you can't like erase the past, mm -hmm. but you can definitely address it in a way that your new mindset or your new set of strategies will put you in a place where you don't relive those things that may have tripped you up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or may have stifled your progress toward whatever goal that you have in order to be a better you. Right. I think that that's a, a fresh start. I think that fresh start can be forgiveness. A fresh start can be grace. Uh, especially when, let's say, you know, you know, I think it's tough on a person that, uh, let's say they look up to this person mm -hmm. and this person has been really purpose driven, always a support to somebody. And then when they have the one issue or if they just fall off the horse, then in the eyes of people, it's like they're no earthly good. Right. But a person, they are, we are human. And so if that happens, a fresh start, forgiveness, a new beginning, a way of looking at reflecting and making some adjustments mm -hmm. uh, is something that any person would, sh or I would say, should be looking at. Right. But I know that Millicent talked about a few words, and I won't mention them right now until later because I don't want to go into that. But I know that that's why sometimes people slip into other areas. Right. And they feel like they just can't get out. I can't get out. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. It's because... Or refuse to <clears throat> acknowledge that it even is a situation. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If we don't acknowledge that, okay, it is a situation, and then reflect on it from different angles, it's still going to go unaddressed yeah. because we don't even see it's a problem. That's just <clears throat> like an alcoholic won't realize he's an alcoholic until mm -hmm. they admit it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So... All right, we got some people in the house. Good morning. Good morning, AJ. <laughs> Keep it 100. Thank you, thank you. All right, all right. Okay, so anybody else have any reason or idea why we need a fresh start and what does that do? I don't see nothing in the chat. Come on, I need you, you know to... A fresh start to me means getting rid of memories that are painful. A fresh start means getting rid of memories that are painful. Thank okay, you, Charlie. Charlie. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then also with that, Charlie, I'm going to add to that is that after you've been through something painful, realizing what may trigger you in the future and making a plan to get a handle on that so that trigger doesn't have a domino effect mm -hmm. downwards. Yeah. So it don't keep you stuck. Mm -hmm. That you address the pain, understand that it's real, you're a human, mm -hmm. but God can give you true healing to that. I'd rather you receive the healing for the pain instead of a band-aid. You know. Absolutely. You know, well. AJ said the fresh start opens new doors. All right. Absolutely. Then. Opening new doors. Mm hmm Doors that if 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 we play our well I won't say it, that's not a good statement. I won't say play our cards right. If we are focused on the future, I'll say that then you'll know of those new doors that AJ is talking about. Mm -hmm. These are the ones we need to walk through. We right. know that. Mr. Rodney Ned, Mr. Lisa Ned. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> Jalisa, I hope you're cooking something. I hope somebody over there cooking. 
Okay, we're moving on. Because he's trying to get over to y'all's house and get something to eat. <sighs> All right. So, <laughs> some things that uh, a fresh start does for you. And AJ can attest to this. And he just basically said opening new doors. Mm -hmm. um, it motivates you to get things done. So, what, what was in your mind? You know, you kind of maybe thought about, touched on a little bit. But then you just kind of let it slip to the back. Getting a fresh start motivates you to get things done that have become stagnant. Here's the big one. Getting a fresh start, y'all listen, helps you to drop habits that were not serving you or adding value to your life. Um, it's quiet in here. I, I, I need some people to come on. I got sidetracked because she's sitting right there working. Ain't no food. That's why I got kind of sidetracked. Uh, you're I, supposed to be paying attention to that. I, I, I am. Hooked on what she's saying because she ain't helping. I'm hungry. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm we did it again. again. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> we need a fresh start because it helps you to drop habits that were not serving you. Or adding value to your life. And that also comes with a reflection, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Going back and just really reflecting on, hey, this is the situation. This is how I reacted. Or this is what I did. Not always focusing on what the other person did. Mm -hmm. What did I do? How did I respond? What was my mindset? Did I even receive the information right? Or did I just go off the handle because I already had a response? To something that I thought was a response to me, but really wasn't that response. Either way, if those type of habits are those same things that keep circling the wagon, and you feel like you're surrounded and you can't get out and you actually see the actual uh, the scenery, let's say that you own a hundred acre spread of land, mm -hmm. but you only confined to one acre, so you don't know how beautiful it is for the rest. Because some of those same things that we keep doing keep us stuck on that one acre instead of us going out and really expanding on the other 99. We can't see what's going on. We can't see the beauty of it because we've confined ourselves by our thoughts. We confine ourselves by our reactions. Mm -hmm. We confine ourselves by simply not reflecting in a way that builds on the identification and the acknowledgement that what we did or how we handled it or how we received the information was inaccurate. And that is the number one job of the enemy. To divide, to deceive, and produce information that is inaccurate. So, AJ said disagreement. What, what we, what? He said, "Yes, not making the problem or disagreement famous, not giving so <clears throat> much life to it." Mm -hmm. But but the thing is, let's say that let's let's dig a little deeper. So let's say that the the life is a fire. Well, the fire is going to continue to get oxygen when we feed it, and we're feeding it something that's negative. That fire is going to continue to burn. Until we put it out either with water if it's a regular fire mm -hmm. or with flour if it's a grease fire. And you know what happens when you put water on a grease fire. You got to burn your house down. Yeah. Because all it's going to do is spread the oil and burn all over. So with this work, it's still the premise that we got to think about us. Mm -hmm. And we have to think about really the addressing. When Miss Charlie said about dealing with those memories, mm -hmm. they're painful. But when addressed and asking God to continue to um, focus on us and, and really push us to really dig a little bit deeper, mm -hmm. that's how we find out. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Go ahead. And um, I just want to really thank you all for really pushing me into the chat. Because remember, this is how we grow and by building on each other. We're talking about a fresh start. A fresh start. This is um, the Millicent's uh, Inspired Lesson by God. And so I am excited because there's some really good pieces in there. But that, that last piece about dropping habits that were not serving you, mm -hmm. 
that comes with personal reflection and um, meditation. You got to push out, like we said last week, Absolutely. you got to go push out the white noise. And you really need to focus on, hey, what is my involvement? Mm-hmm. What did I do? Because we want to always look at what others did. What did you do or say or allow to come into your mind? Absolutely. So that way we can deal with that. Because if not, mm-hmm. then two days later, three days later, mm-hmm. one week of peace, then we go back. This yeah. is from experience. Right, right, we had right. something where we overcome something. Something came up. It was a trigger, Miss Charlie. Yep. It was a trigger and bam. It's yeah. like we slid down the mountain. Mm-hmm. And so that is not um, the hamster wheel of life that Melissa and I have for ourselves. Yeah. So then comes the reflection mm-hmm. without a joke. Okay, like she go reflect. Right. I you have to reflect. reflect on yourself individually. And then um, what we've learned is that there needs to be a deeper level of communication. Mm-hmm. Not that it's not good, but there are some areas where it could be top, and there's some areas where it's surface level and not good enough. Mm-hmm. So then, <clears throat> because we acknowledge that, then the work comes into... How do we focus on practicing those good habits? Absolutely. Because now we've identified that mm-hmm. we've isolated a bad habit. Right. And right. I want to say this, but this may not be true. This is just something I heard in conversation or something. Okay. So when you do something uh, seven times, good or bad, you know, it produces a routine. That routine can be a habit. And habits are hard to break. So it's the same thing when it's a. We won't get to that. That's coming. So the the thing about it is, um, if we're talking about uh, good strategies, then we need to keep practicing them. So, brother Ed, I've been saying my I am statement every day. I speak it on myself, especially in the areas that I know I'm not strong in, because I'm calling those things that be not as though they were, and so. I, I, I'm, I'm committed to that, Brother Ed. So I, I just wanted to put that out there uh, about dropping the bad habits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and even if you pick pick it back up, you know, the more that you focus on you in the in the in the removal of the white noise and continue to meditate and speak the positivity of yourself, and you practice that, the things that trigger you in, in the past, they won't have so much of an effect. The devil is counting on your immediate and automatic response Mm -hmm. to the same thing because then he can move on. Oh, man. Gerald is bound by this. All I got to do is just flick on the word this and Mm -hmm. he just boom. So I'll be back next week Mm -hmm. after they think they good, after they think they solid, and I'll just pop a pee Mm -hmm. off the plate, Mm -hmm. the the green pee, Mm -hmm. and then he's going to take one bite and then bam. He gonna go back, and so that's what we don't want. Right. Identification, acknowledgement, then practice a strategy. You get me? Mm-hmm. And, I, and not just that. I plot a word, dog. You know, do that too. I'm not saying so, but but it needs to be every day, mm-hmm. over and over. Reprogram the mind that this is how I will now address this area. Because I know that this is an area that I do not do well in. Okay. Being intentional. All right. So the last thing that a fresh start does, it helps you to form new habits. But not just new habits. It helps you to form new habits that line up with your values, line up with your goals, and line up with your dreams. And that's what that's what we want to get to. We want to reflect on the past just mm-hmm. enough to see what happened, how it happened, and what could I have done differently. <clears throat> okay. So now that we're talking about what a fresh start does, how do we take the steps to a fresh start? All right, get ready. Okay. We so, we're going up the roller coaster now with the click 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 click. 
You gonna take you gonna type the the scriptures in the chat too, or do I need to type the scriptures no, while I read it? I will type it. Thank you, ma'am. She's trying to. So think. so she he's nervous being during the week. So who are you on the weekend? I am. I don't know, Secretary Pablo or something. I don't know. There we go. Come on. Um. <clears throat> okay. So while he's typing that in, Which one are you Ephesians? it's Ephesians five, eight through eleven. Mm. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'll go out get that. Guys, this is why I typed his papers while he was in college. This, this is why. At least I did the work. Huh? At least I did the work. And I like you typing. Okay, me. so anyway, our first step to a fresh start is to clean out your closet. You have sizes in there that you can no longer fit. For, for a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons. <laughs> Clean out your closet. You have sizes in there that no longer fit. I can truly say this. As you get older, your needs change. I can say that now. I'm 51. I ain't shame. I'll be 52 January the 29th. So, whatever. But the same things that I... The things that I need right now... The 51-year-old me are not the same things as the 31-year-old me needed. Personally, emotionally, 13 through 14. Okay. Physically, sexually, you know, they say if you get older, you whatever for women. <clears throat> but... Jalisa, listen, Jalisa, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> she won't hurt you. Okay? So, what, clean Lawanda? up. I'm messing with another Lawanda. Let me see. Let me go back and see if anybody else. I came with a chat. I'm going to see anybody. What other ladies in Miss Charlie? All right, I'm going to stop. I'm, a, I'm just looking through the chat now. You when know. they show up at the door. <laughs> All right, sissy. There you go. She know, she know what I'm talking about. Go ahead, honey. Okay. <laughs> so clean out your closet. You have sizes in there that no longer fit. So we're going to do Ephesians 5, 8 through 11, okay, and then that. 5, 13, and 14. So it says that you yourself used to be in the darkness, but since you have become the Lord's people, you are now in the light. So you must live like people who belong to the light. For it is the light that brings a rich Harvest to every kind of goodness, righteousness, and truth. Try to learn what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with worthless things that people do. Things that belong to the darkness. Instead, bring them out to the light. <clears throat> do I need to read 12? No, I go 13. 13. And it says, and when all things are brought out to the light, then their true nature is clearly revealed. It is. For anything that is clearly revealed becomes light. That is why it is said, wake up sleeper and rise from your death and Christ will shine on you. So we need to focus on that. When you actually acknowledge these things that we talked about, those mm -hmm. triggers, those areas that seem like they just keep surfacing. Mm -hmm. And then when we do that, um, we're able to isolate that and apply God's word to that mm -hmm. and say, Lord, I don't want to give this fire no more oxygen. I don't want to give this unfertile ground no more bad seed to grow. Mm -hmm. I prefer mm -hmm. to allow you to help me deal with this first. And you get to choose. You ain't got to tell the devil anything. I want to deal with this character trait about me first. Oh, Lord, I reverse that thought. Lord, what do you want me to deal with first in your meditation and in your time of thought? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to address first, Lord? And when he say that, don't be like, oh, I don't, I don't think I heard you. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. I don't think I heard you, Lord. I, you didn't say that. Yes, he did. So deal with that and then go forward. So let's, 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 let's keep the roller coaster moving up. Where All you? right. So the second one. The step, the second step to a fresh start is to declutter your home. 
if it's in your in or on your mind and it does not benefit where you desire to move get rid of it mm -hmm. if it's in or on your mind and it does not benefit where you desire to move get rid of it and when all things are brought out to the light their true nature is clearly revealed so lord let me be able to see clearly what you see that i am truly struggling with mm -hmm. all of these other things is involved because i do not address this all those other things will go away when you address that because the enemy talks about something that i don't know if Millicent gonna talk about this but we learned it last week and we've learned it before when the house has been cleaned by the lord Mm -hmm. And you do not put things in there that magnify and glorify him. That's it. That little ugly, nasty thing will come back and bring seven more of his little friends to hang out. Absolutely. So it's not that the house don't get clean or decluttered. It's that what you put in the house has to have some real value. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you need to put that word in your head, in your heart. You need to be practicing. Because like I said, when you dump that one pee off the plate... He is coming back, and he's going to come back for stronger, more more power, and more force. Because he sees that you are a threat. And as he sees that you are a threat, that's why you attack. That's why we get attacked. Mm -hmm. They're going to attack people here he already know he got. He'll go after the ones that he feel mm -hmm. like, hey, if, if, they, if they can reach 1,000 or 10,000 or 100,000, that's going to take away from my army. And I need them on my side. I don't need them working for God. Right. I need to break that up. Mm -hmm. I need to set some discord between him and his wife, or the wife and the children, mm -hmm. or the children and the, and the and the grandparents, or the friends, or the neighbors. Let me set up some discord and put some places of separation so that nobody wants to communicate or hang out or anything. And let me just go ahead and divide and just break them down. And so, for us, that's why we want to bring light to how we can have the fresh start. Declutter and get rid of stuff that you don't need. Yeah. You look at it, oh, mm -hmm. maybe not. You ain't going to fit in that stuff. Mm -hmm. You ain't getting your body back in there. Yeah. You're away from 1980. Our Lord. <laughs> you know, don't don't go back to 19... Uh, you, it's, it's over. They don't wear shirts like that anymore. It's coming back. It's gone. It's not coming back. Don't even wear Stop that. Stop trying to resurrect it. Don't even try to wear that in this part. It's, 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 it's done. <laughs> Get you something else. So be trendy. But the, but the reality is that's what mm -hmm. that's what we can really uh, apply right. is that after bringing clear vision to what is really the issue, then once it's revealed, for anything that is clearly revealed becomes light. It's so you can see it. That is why it is said, "Wake up, sleeper, and rise from your death, and Christ will shine on you." Because now you know what's tripping you up and keeping you messed up and just weighing you out yeah. and punching you and getting you as soon as you get on and get up. You know now. Now you spend your time addressing. Well, when she gets to that, I'm pretty sure she's going to talk about this, but yeah. you can spend your time doing that. Okay. So when you clean out your closet, you make room for things that will bring you more joy. And that brings us to Hebrews, the Hebrews 3. Four through six. Hebrews, okay. Mm -hmm. I was born this. I uh, Hebrewed. Yeah, Hebrews. He brewed this coffee this morning. Three. Mm hmm. Three and four through six. It says, Every house, of course, is built by someone, and God is the one who has built all things. Moses was faithful in God's house as a servant, and he spoke of the things that God would say in the future. But Christ is faithful as the son in charge of God's house. We are his house if we keep our courage and our confidence in what we hope for. And so she just said that. And I don't see how it can't be any clearer. 
Christ is faithful. That means he's going to always show up as the son in charge of God's house. Mm -hmm. Christ ain't out there defending God's house with some lackluster. He got some power. Mm -hmm. He got some authority. He got some righteousness. You know, he got some staying power. We are his house if we keep our courage and confidence in what we hope for. So what we hope for when she talked about the, the, the expansion of building on the joy is that that's a part of, of, of growing. Is now looking at not just what brings you joy, but if you're coming out of something mm -hmm. and what you did to come out was effective, then you need to keep practicing that. That becomes a lifestyle, not a life change. Right. That's a lifestyle. That means this is what you practice every day. Every day? Mm hmm All right. So the third thing that gets us to a fresh start is to take time for self-reflection. And we actually talked about that early mm -hmm. on. <clears throat> so reflect on the events of the past only to get clarity of what you really want. What others look like, I'm sorry, only to get clarity of what you really want, what that looks like, and formulate the plan to make it happen. What have you learned, and what do you want to change? So I won't really reflect on that because we I already talked about that. You talked about that first. Good morning, Bryce. What is my first, next, best step? I know that sounds crazy and redundant, but that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Lord, in order for me to get to a place of structure, reflect, reflection, and for me to build on what you revealed to me and what I've understood your voice to be when I was reflecting on what my issue is, what is my first, next, best step? Mm -hmm. Not my first, next step. I want to know, Lord, what is my first, next best step. Mm -hmm. They got a rating on tires when you go to um, discount tires. It says good, better, and best. Mm -hmm. That's the only kind of tires they have, a good, a discount tire. They have good tires. They will do okay. They have better tires, structurally better, and I mean, they're going to last a little. And then the best, look here, if you don't want to buy some tires in the next whatever years, get these. Plus, it's more warranty, Plus, we got buyback, whatever it is. So, Lord, what is my first, oh, my finger needs My first, next, next best, best step. step. What is that? Mm -hmm. And when he tells you what that is, don't be acting like you know you didn't hear it. Right. Like you're mm -hmm. playing like you got selective amnesia. Mm -hmm. When he says that, that's what you need to focus on. And no matter how you don't want to chew it, it's time to get to chew it. So that, that way... When that pops up again, you don't have that problem. You don't have that, I want to run away. You don't have that that feeling of whatever. Yeah. We got it. We got it. Clean out that closet. Mm -hmm. Throw away them clothes. Now you got a new closet. Now it's got some more space. Absolutely. The space that you want to feel. She was talking about, you know, adding more joy to your life. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you. That if you start practicing strategies based on what God shows you that you need to address first, mm -hmm. you're going to have joy. Because when you come out of the foolishness, you're going to be like, dog, I let this trip me up and keep me bound for this long, long time. Right. These right. two years, these two months, these ten years, I have wasted. Lord, thank you that I don't have to waste not one other second. And not only that, what's cool about that is, you know, and I don't know all the, 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 the scripture numbers. But the God said He will restore what the canker worm made up. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Good morning, Tish. All right. So the the scripture for that one is for step number three okay. is Ecclesiastes ten nine through ten. I'm getting there, y'all. Give me a second. Ecclesiastes ten and nine through ten, and I'm putting all the scriptures in the chat so that way you all can. Um, we don't want you to just listen. We want you to go back and study it for yourself. You know, take the notes and apply the scripture to your life. Okay. It says, if you work in a stone quarry, 
you get hurt by stones. If you split wood, you get hurt doing it. If your axe is dull and you don't sharpen it, you have to work harder to use it. It's smarter to plan ahead. She said, formulate a plan on how you going to make it. And that means that that is a conversation between you and God mm -hmm. about first you figuring out what it is that's tripping you up. And then when you involve him, Absolutely. then you know what your first next best step is. That is your plan and you follow it. You don't let other people try to talk you out of that. God has truly spoken to you. Mm -hmm. You've had time to reflect and get some uh, some time away from the white noise. Right. And now you know this is what I need to do. And because of that, your axe is sharp and you can cut the wood. Because that is real. It, it, you will be out there forever. That's just like when we first moved over here and... We didn't have a lawnmower that you could we had ride. A push mower. And we had a push mower. And I was out there with a push mower trying to cut an acre. And they just, after a while, they just start coming outside. They looking. And I just quit. I left the lawnmower out there. I got in the car. I went to dog on Lowe's. And I came back with a, with a tractor guy. I was with, with, you know, with the, with the thing. With a riding lawnmower. Yeah, because I was like, I, <laughs> it took me like, 45 minutes just to cut one section and I would have had to cut five more sections just to get the front done so that's foolishness and that's not working in a way that God would say would be efficient so it says if your axe is dull and you don't sharpen it that means if you get strategies on how to build yourself up through God's word and you don't practice it then it says you have worked harder to use it. Mm -hmm. So therefore you you still stuck in the muck. So we can do we can do it differently by allowing God to show us what our next first, what our first next best step is and then we just can practice. 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 Bryce said when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yes, right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Luanda doing shade talking about good exercise. All right, girl. Okay, so the second part of that is Ecclesiastes 5 and 18 through 20. <clears throat> so it's 5 and verses 18 through 20. I'm going to read to you. Okay. It okay. says, here is what I have found out. The best thing we can do is eat and drink and enjoy what we've worked for during the short life that God has given us. This is our faith. If God gives us wealth and, pro and property and lets us enjoy them, we should be grateful and enjoy what we have worked for. It is a gift from God. Since God has allowed us to be <clears throat> happy, we will not worry too much about how short life is. Did I read the right one? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. So, if... Uh, you know, I think that if you are now in the light and not in the darkness, you can truly enjoy those things that you have worked for that God has placed in your life for your benefit, for your enjoyment, because you took that next step. You took that next step toward where he wants you to go because even though we have plans, even though we have dreams and aspirations, as we continue to meditate, as we continue to pray, and as we continue to focus on how and what direction God wants us to go in, it still has a lot of with His plan. And when we are in alignment with that, I guarantee you, you will be so happy and rewarded in the work that you put in. Because it is not just for you to overcome and to conquer those things that have tripped you up. Mm -hmm. When you overcome and conquer those things, God has put you in a place of responsibility to make sure that you push and you support anybody that has struggled or is struggling in the area that you 
have now conquered and overcome the enemy because in their eyes they have no hope it will not work I've tried everything mm -hmm. and they don't have a compass but you me Millicent us we're that compass we're that we're that that lifeline mm -hmm. so I just wanted to put that out there because it's 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 a, a benefit from when we assemble together. Right. It's a benefit when we focus on the word and what it's saying <clears throat> and then also have examples of it in real life, you know. And don't get it twisted. <clears throat> it don't always feel good. <clears throat> so just know, trust, and understand. But if it's his word, it's true. If it's his truth word, is it's light. true. Yeah. And if you don't want to keep wallowing around in the muck and in the dark, the word is the light. So when we apply that, then we get to move forward. Get out of the muck. All right, number four to how to get a fresh step is set new goals. So after self-reflection and how things turned out, what I can do to make sure they don't happen again, which is planning. Um, that was number four. Mm -hmm. Real real quick. So basically just a recap. Number five. And this is where you talked about that mm -hmm. earlier. So number five is to reinvent yourself. So now we've done all of it. We've did the accountability and responsibility. Now it's to move forward and reinvent yourself. You choose how to grow. Choose to I'm sorry, mm -hmm. choose to grow. And execute. So execute means what? Execute means carry out, put into effect. It's a plan, order, or course of action. So reinvent yourself and choose to grow and execute consistent mm -hmm. actions. Like you talked about last mm -hmm. week. Consistent actions. If you can execute consistent actions for 90 days, it becomes a permanent lifestyle change. Wow. So... The 20, there's a 2190 rule that states 21 days to make it a habit, 90 days to make it a permanent lifestyle change. So now I'm going to go back and add what Gerald said. So it takes 7 days to become a routine, 21 days to become a habit, but 90 days to make it a lifestyle change. Ooh, I got to put that on my board in my office. Seven twenty-one and ninety. I'm ready to go. Seven twenty-one and ninety. Yes, ma'am. I am so ready to go with that. And see, for me, I just need small, little pick-me-ups, okay. and for that, that just that's that's the um, because every time I see that, my focus is to kind of reflect all the way within, right? I want to reflect what I'm hitting, what I'm doing, mm -hmm. how's it how's it impacted, so that that way you always have a kind of a pulse check of yourself. Throughout the day. Now, it's not just about are you hitting some targets, but if the post check is say, Lord, where, where am I today right now? Mm -hmm. You know, I ain't saying to do a post check with us. So do a post check with God. Hey, hey, where am I at right now? How am I responding? Am I being respectful? Am I, am I coming off in a way that's not representative of you? Right. You can do that post check based on that. But seven, oh, man, that's good. Seven twenty one and 90. Oh, that's awesome. Read that again. So it takes seven days to have a routine or develop a routine, 21 days for something to become a habit, and 90 days for it to become a lifestyle change. So think about if you really want to, you know, fight against whatever, like bad eating habits or weight or whatever. It takes time. That's why, you know, those people that do the personal training, that's why they're so they're so unapologetic and they don't allow you to make excuses mm -hmm. because they know it's going to take a whole lot of time to change the mindset and it's going to take some time for the person to understand that all of our fitness goals are not the same. So this personal plan that I put together for you, it is for you to do these things. And then when we get to this point, you should feel better about yourself mentally and physically. Quit looking at the outer shell. Your blood work is better. You got more stamina. You got fresh thoughts. You know how to deal with stress better. 
Mm-hmm. You're just looking at whether you got a muscle or a six pack, that ain't enough. That ain't why that person doing all that. That's a byproduct of it. But think about how long it takes to push a weight or a fitness goal. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The one day in place. So true. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, what I have, what I have learned, because I'm, I'm going through my thing too, is to not beat yourself up. <clears throat> I've been following this guy on TikTok, and you know he's a fitness coach, and that was one thing he was saying is that if you've been doing, you know, getting your exercise in, changing your eating habits. If you fall off the boat one day, you cannot sit there and beat yourself up by missing it one day. Acknowledge it, fix it, and keep pushing. That's all we can do. And then when we get the seven days in consistently, and then let the 21 be the next goal, and then let the 90 be the next goal. Mm Mm-hmm. But I really like that because it doesn't take long to, to build a habit, right? Well, no, let me go back. It won't take long to build that routine of seven days of consistently doing that. Mm-hmm. Then the 21 days is that's three weeks of really just reprogramming your mind. And now you know you don't want to drop back to 21 or 7, so you're going to continue to do that. It becomes a lifestyle because now nobody can talk you out of it when you get to 90 days about it don't work. Right. Absolutely. They can't talk you out of it. They can't. They may can tell you something to add to it, but it's. Mm-mm. I done put in the work, baby. I know this works. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why you you got all them fitness people out there. Everybody got an angle, but the reason why they stand by what they say because they did it. Well, they don't. It, this is a new thing. That's fine for you, mm-hmm. but they're telling you. This is what I did. Mm-hmm. This is why I was. Yep. This is how big I was. This is what I ate. Yep. This worked. I got exactly. blood work to prove it. I got clothes to prove it. Mm-hmm. I got a whole new different mindset. So I am sorry. I am not going to stop mm-hmm. this way of working and thinking. Right. Because it has shown over these many whatever. Because it takes a while. Just like they tell you, if you got to detoxify. Mm-hmm. I won't go do this. I won't that. No, go detoxify. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what they tell you to do. Yeah. You get me so. Mm-hmm. And just like mm-hmm. Tish, Tisha said, mm-hmm. dust yourself off mm-hmm. and keep mm-hmm. pushing. That's right. Shake the dust off your feet. And Don't keep pushing. Because the devil wants you to go and reflect on that. And then I know that LaWanda said something about the depression. Yeah. If you go reflect on the negative and you don't have that strength to say, you know what? I made a mistake, but look look how many days prior to that mistake I made. Right, right. I, I was 15 days into the work. Mm-hmm. I made a mistake. So why are we going to worry about, we're going to dismiss 15 days of hard work? Mm-hmm. No, ma'am. You're going to dismiss that one day of a mistake, and you're going to continue to go along. And then you're going to say 16 days, mm-hmm. 17 days, mm-hmm. 20 days, and then you just keep moving forward. You don't just go reflect on the, the one thing. So I'm going to give you an example of myself. I had been doing stuff during the week, you know, lifting some lifting some hand weights at, at home and, and getting the steps in. So I push myself. I sit all day. I'm a nurse case manager that sit on my butt in that chair over there from 8 to 5. I have to make myself get up and move. And it is so hard drinking the water and getting up and moving. So the goal for myself... I know that I would never again in my life be 125 pounds in a size 6. Ain't happening. I probably look like a crackhead if I get back to that right now. You know, but we talking about 27 years of marriage later and four kids later. It is not happening. I'm not even trying to get to that. (laughs) But the goal that I set for myself was to get in 10,000 steps a day change my eating habits and even if i have something like we had pizza last night true thing the old me i would have been four slices down and a coca-cola on the side for me it was two slices and a bottle of water i struggled to get through that last piece but this has been constant days of cutting down my portion sizes walking he fixes my plate. Now, half the time when you fix my plate, do I even finish it? Because I can't. Because it's 
the little changes a step at a time it wasn't just one day I just oh bam and it happened mm -hmm. so the same thing in life when we reflect back on this is what it was this is what I don't want anymore and how do I change the narrative moving forward it's the little things one at a time just like I tell my patients pick one thing mm -hmm. where you really struggle okay well I have bread some kind of bread breakfast lunch and dinner with every meal Cut out one meal. Have you some toast with your eggs and coffee and be done with your bread mm -hmm. for the day. Do something different. But we cannot sit there in the muck, like he said, continue to beat ourselves up. We mm -hmm. gotta move. Mm -hmm. We gotta move. And move comes by applying the word to our daily life. That is. <clears throat> Was saying the prayer about and the one that I, I, I get that, honey, trust me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I get it. But the thing is, and this is something else I heard yesterday, I'm always going back telling you what I've heard and applying it and what helps me. Because that's the whole deal that is broadcast, right? Mm -hmm. is, to, is to help others, to help each other. Oh, <laughs> just silly, right? Okay. Um, but the thing is, even with the depression and, and missing loved ones, mm -hmm. them feelings going to come and go. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have no control and you ain't got no warning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes around my grandmother's birthday, I'd be just fine. Bam. Out of nowhere, the tears flow. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. But as long as, again, we don't sit in it and we move. We pray and ask God for his peace. Find the strength in him and keep him moving. But the other thing is, those loved ones will want us to be happy. Absolutely. They will want us to reflect on what they've added. Because mm -hmm. all of those people in our lives, you know, they've added some value. They've, they've given you something. That's why you are who you are now. It's because of what they um, deposited in you or what they deposited in us. So even though those days will come, and they will, you know, I try to focus on when I'm in that space. One, I don't want to be no earthly good to my family because I'm acting like I'm having a pity party. Mm -hmm. It's okay to miss somebody, but you still need to focus on what they added to you. So that, that way, you magnify their life in what they would want you to be. Right. They want you to be happy. They want you to build on your family. They want you to learn from their mistakes. They ain't here no more. You know what they did. You know what did you know what they did that was strong, you know what they did that made you don't want to repeat. So all of that is for our benefit. You know, because we still we still here. So I, I think that, you know, we um, got a lot of stuff we got work to do, but I'm so excited about it, you know, the work. And it's not that it's easy but it's it's necessary. Thank you, Miss Gloria. It's necessary, this it's work. Necessary. Because we we ain't doing it for ourselves. We ain't doing it for ourselves. Like I said before, if we check out of here, we got to know that we didn't deposit we didn't deposit enough of our children, not so they can just get by in life. Because that's not what we want. We want our kids to flourish. We want them to prosper, and we want them to be much better than us. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so. That's always our work. Whether you got children or not, you got grand godchildren, grandchildren, you are that patriarch for the family in some way, shape, fashion, or form. So, okay, Bryce, I can help you with that. Okay. Let me let me let me let me commit to that, Bryce. Okay. First, we got to commit to seven days, then twenty-one, and then ninety. So let me let me commit to that. I'll start sending some stuff out to you. Uh, I'll be actually, in. if you don't mind, mm -hmm. you can have us both. Yeah. So let's 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 focus on that. We're gonna we got you, Bryce. I thank you for putting that out there. We got. We, I got you. We can do it together, all three of us, and anybody else that see this message they wanna yeah. kind of push into that work. Yeah. We got about five minutes. We just want to let you know how much we love you and appreciate you. My wife did an outstanding job. High five to the thank left you. hand. High five to the left hand. That was really good. <clears throat> So we can really celebrate the fact that everybody deserves a fresh start. Yeah. Everybody deserves a fresh start. And you can claim it. 
the angels that you just start you claim that you speak that yeah. you, you know just you speak that and that's what we do all right we got some people on here that's really been involved you know okay. you can go back and look at this and hey we're good to go <clears throat> okay so uh bryce and gay um make sure that i have your your cell phone numbers mm -hmm. make sure mm -hmm. that i have your cell phone numbers and we will do this we yeah. will do this yeah we, we we can't be no we can't be no shady uh uh, non-committed accountability partners. We can't be no right. backsliders now. Now I ain't talking about that, but what I'm saying is if we're going to commit to being an accountability partner, then me and Millicent got to step up our game too because yeah. it's it's important to you all and it's definitely important to me. So it, it's no, it's no, it's only win-win. You know, it's only win-win. That's it. So we really, we got some work to do. This is going to be, hey, thank you, brother. Got it, got it. Okay, got it, guys. <laughs> And you start typing, I'm going to put it in, let me take care of that right now. Yeah. Yeah, because I want to. Yeah. And so what we can do, this is what we can do. And I'll set them up. We'll start, uh, Gay, <clears throat> make sure I got you. You got Gay's number, don't you? I need to see if if, if it's still, hold on. Because I got a new phone, y'all. And so some of my phone numbers didn't transfer. Uh, okay, got yeah. it. Thank you, Gay. So what I'll do is we'll start, uh. We'll do a group chat just that. for our accountability partners, and we can we can do that. Okay, so so we'll so we'll I'll get that set up today when we get off of here. So just want to uh, thank you guys for the love. Oh, <coughs> you know what, Lawanda? I am gonna send you something. I'm gonna send it Monday because Monday is November the first. Since you talk about you gonna start November the first. Mrs. Lindsay, I'm going to send it oh to you goodness. Monday while you try to be smart about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Mm -hmm. like nah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. we're going to go ahead and get off of here. You, I'm trying to check this game number. 832. Uh, 358. Whoops, uh, where'd it go? The chat is moving. Right here. 359. What's the rest of it? 5195. Okay. Take it here. Yeah. Nine five. It. Okay. Yeah, All right. So we'll get that done, and uh, <clears throat> I'll make sure we add uh, Mrs. Lizzie to the chat on Monday, since she says she's not doing that until November first. Uh, oh, Akeem said add her too. Okay, mm -hmm. I got you. I got you. Okay. So we'll set set it up and get it done. So this has been amazing, y'all. We love you guys. <clears throat> I want you to please go back. Yes. Okay, Bryce. November 1st, Monday. What? M Monday is the start date. November 1st. Today is... Uh, the 30th. Tomorrow's the 31st. The 31st. Monday, Monday is the start date. Why do we need to wait till Monday? Your friend started that. Ms. Lindsay started that talking about November 1st. Um, all right, one. <laughs> all right, so we love you guys and thank you for spending the best first part of your morning with us. Yes. We will see you all next Saturday. Accountability group will get started on Monday. And you all have a great rest of your weekend and we'll see you next Saturday to discuss more marriage matters because your, your marriage, marriage matters. matters. All right. Bye, love Bye. you guys.